She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is the Danny Johnson Show. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Danny Johnson Show. Hey, did you know that your finances are supposed to be fun? <laughs> You're probably like cracking up just right. You're like, what? Fun with my finances? No, Danny, finances are boring. They are a burden. Well, not always. And you're probably thinking, well, of course, if I had tons of money, then that would be fun. No, that's you're talking about what you would do with money. But I'm telling you that learning about money actually can be fun, even if you think it is boring. I have to tell you, I used to think that paying off debt was going to be super boring, such a major burden. I used to be, in fact, I, I have to tell you something. This is like absolutely hilarious. Back in my early, early days, like my really stupid days, mind you, I started as an entrepreneur at 19 years old, not because I thought I could succeed, but because I knew I could fail. And on a failure equation. I actually got started in business for myself at 19. And guess what? I failed. I failed the first six months. I was a total disaster living off of my credit cards. Um, even like, you know, buying food with my credit cards, paying my rent with credit cards, making my car payment with my credit cards because I had no income. Um, I was like, I made a really dumb mistake of quitting my really good job working for JC Penney's and I was making really good money, especially for 19 years old. And yeah, then I had no income at all. For some reason, I thought that, you know, business was just going to fall out of the sky and that just because I started in business, like, wow, now that means, you know, customers automatically flood to you. You automatically find and recruit the greatest people to help carry your message out there. No, I didn't even know how to get a customer. I did not even know how to carry a message out there. So I flopped like a dead fish or a dying fish on a dock um, that's after it's been like fished out of the ocean. And there it is, just plop, 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 plop. And that's exactly how I was for business. So anyway, so my finances obviously were a disaster when I first got started. No small wonder I grew up in a house where my parents fought constantly about money. I, we were on welfare until I was about 13 years old or so. And, and so they would fight every Every, at the end of every pay period, the first and the 15th of the month, they would just be like fighting. Like we're talking brawls, we're talking blood, we're talking black eyes, we're talking bruises. Like I grew up in a violently abusive home. So I, I hope you're getting the picture, which is not fun. So anyway, so money has like been a painful thing, you know, a real painful thing. Even after my mom broke her neck and she received a settlement, same thing happened. They, they This settlement actually started coming in um, at the first and the 15th of the month. They would get these two installments and they would end up fighting still because they were spending all that they were making and they were miserable people. They were not like happy. Now, mind you, my mom had broken her neck. So of course, you know, she's struggling. She was 29 years old when this happened. You know, it was a terrible, painful time. Um, and then you add on all the prescription drugs and the street drugs into the whole mix. It's just a gigantic disaster is what it was. But my, what, basically what I'm saying is, is that money's always been a painful thing. I associated money with pain. And so even when the, my, the money changed, you know, when, we, when I was 14, we moved into a big old house because of my mom's finances. I moved out of the house when I was 16 years old. So I had two years of living in this big house. But the intensity of the fighting increased once they got the nicer house, once they got new cars, uh, once they, you know, had clothes, once we, you know, we went from like, you know, pasta all the time to now they were buying steak all the time. But it didn't make anybody any happier. So again, my childhood trained me to believe that money was a painful thing. And I don't know if you have the same program in your head, but I know that it's a very common program in many people's head. So what I'm saying is, why don't we go ahead and take this painful, burdensome thing about money, and why don't we flip it over on its belly and go, hey, what if money was fun? What if it was fun to actually save money? I have to tell you, I went through this 18 years ago. My entire financial outlook changed in a moment, and that honestly was after I got like severely convicted about how I was spending money. We had spent 10 years. I learned how to make millions of dollars, right? Not from that first business, obviously, because I totally flopped. But the next business that I started after I was a homeless woman and really severely failed, I, I ended up, we made tons of money 
And we had lots of fun with the money, but the burden, the pressure, the pain of it actually increased the more that we made and why we were spending, we were still living paycheck to paycheck. When we made a little, we lived paycheck to paycheck. When we made a lot, we lived paycheck to paycheck, which was totally asinine. However, 18 years ago, the big wake up call that came about going, hold on a second. This is not working. This sucks. And we simplified our life. We downsized to, from a huge house to a little tiny house. We ended up just like completely changing our lifestyle. And we found that we could actually have fun on less money. And not only that, but saving money now became a game. Paying off debt now became a war, like a good war. Like we're going to win this thing. I don't ever want to be in this financial position again. We were almost a million dollars in debt at that time. And so literally flipped the burden upside down on its belly and just went, Dang it, we're done with this. We're not going to live like this anymore, but we were. this is going to be fun for us. And it was. Like, okay, I, I, I'm going to take a caller here in a minute because we asked our audience a question of like, what are you doing for fun? And that fun has to be part of our life. It's part of our purpose. It's part of our living existence here on planet Earth. And I'm sure you would agree that most people in our society today are not fun. They're just not. It's crazy. And not only that, but people seem to need some kind of an extra substance inside of their body to trick themselves into having fun. But fun, honestly, is giving yourself permission to actually enjoy yourself, to have a good time. And you don't need extra substances to do that. In fact, you don't even need anything to do that. Let me give you a prime example. Last night, my daughter in love just showed up at 1030 at night, right? I'm like getting ready to go jump in the shower shower and and go to bed right no but she just like shows up and what are we doing we literally were out to one o'clock in the morning underneath the gorgeous stars just talking this is a very spontaneous and very unusual thing uh, for me to do at 10 30 at night on a work night okay but it was fun it was fun now you're like danny that has nothing to do with money no but it has everything to do with the fact that it was free sitting outside with your glass of water on a beautiful summer night, looking up and gazing at the stars and just talking about whatever. It was fun and it didn't cost anything. So what kind of things are you doing that you can have, that you're having fun with that don't cost you anything? Because our society has totally brainwashed us into believing that if you're not spending money, you're not having fun. And that is a lie. You see, they want your money. They want your cash. They want your future money. They want your future would-been assets. They're turning your money into their assets. They're turning your money into their slave. They are constantly marketing to you that in order to have fun, you got to spend $1,500 for a day for your family of six to go and enjoy some time at Disneyland. They are brainwashing you and believing that you have to go to Fiesta, Texas in order to have fun, that you have to go to a movie in order to have fun, that you have to spend money in order to have fun. And I'm telling you, that is all bogus and it is a lie. And here's the reality. Tell me, are you actually really yielding out more fun than if you found, and it's fun to find ways to not spend money and have a good time. It's fun. It actually is. I, well, let's go to here. Let's talk to Phelan. I love her name, by the way. Phelan is from Manitoba. Phelan, what do Hi. you do to have fun? Um, well, lately we've been taking advantage of um, trying to find, like, the free events and doing stuff that doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, my husband, a year ago, took a job change and cut his salary basically in half. Um, he works at a Bible camp now up here in Manitoba, and we love it. We love being in the ministry, um, but it has its setbacks. We obviously don't get paid a lot, mm -hmm. um, so we take advantage of free stuff. So we just had Canada Day um, on Sunday, and I took my kids to a free event where there was bouncy castles and fun things to do with, well, there was things that you could spend money on, like right. a hot dog stand and uh, mini donuts and all that. Mini and donuts? Pictures. Did you really just say mini donuts? Oh, my gosh. Why? Why did you say mini donuts? Phelan, I liked you, 
I liked your name, but this is where we have to part ways. I have chills all over my whole body. Oh my gosh. There was a, Phelan, there's a place in San Francisco. Oh gosh, I can't even remember what it, her, the name of it is. Oh my gosh, on Pier 39, and they make them right in front of you, and it's this little tiny machine where it just like drops little turds, if you will, in oil, <laughs> and then they put cinnamon and sugar on top of them. I always get the bag of 39 of them. I do share sometimes. They are so good. Oh my gosh, they're evil. <laughs> I literally have chills all over my whole body. That is so bad. So anyway, okay. So you're saying that, yes, so these free events that happen in the community, that there are places lots to, of, there's ways yeah, to spend money on the hot dog and the donuts. Okay. Here in Texas, girlfriend, there's, they have roasted corn on a stick. Roasted corn. Oh, roasted. <gasps> yeah. See, there's vendors that they have that but you don't have like to go there. All these free things. They mm. come like bouncy castles and face painting. They entice you to come. Yep. And then there's vendors. And then there's things like, oh, I could spend money on this and spend money on that. Yep. And really, it's like, it's an act of discipline. Mm -hmm. Just to be like, you know what? I purposely told myself that day, we're going to have fun. Yep. And I'm going to spend the time with my kids and focus yep. on them. I yep. don't need anything. I don't need to buy anything. Yeah. And yep. so, I mean, we did spend money on a little bag, $5 of mini donuts. And I think there was like a steam train ride that went around the park and it was $3 a ticket. So we spent $9, me and my two kids, $9 mm -hmm. for us to go on this. So I think we spent $14 that entire day. Right. Versus a thousand dollars at a theme park. You know what I mean? Cause yeah, that's what that costs. That's my awesome. My kids loved it. That's they are awesome. They're still talking about it, about the face painting and the free little glitter tattoo that washes off later. Yep. And like just, Fun things, and it doesn't have to be big and extravagant yep, to yep. be memorable. Okay, Phelan, I want to I want to challenge you on something. Okay, uh, first of all, I love what you just were sharing because every community has something like that, and or we ourselves can produce the community that is doing something like that. We literally in our own homes can host that where a few families are going to get together. We're going to have card tournaments, playing cards and doing tournaments. You know, uh, mm -hmm. everyone always has something that we can draw on somebody's face with, right? And have fun even doing that. Like we can create that fun without spending a bunch of money. But I love the fact that you only spent $14. But here's what I want to do is I want to challenge everybody that's listening right now because you can make it fun that with you and your kids, and I used to do this with mine, so when, as you're when as you're saying we're gonna go here and we're gonna experience this, what we're going to do is that we're gonna we're gonna have fun with doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing here today. And what we're going to do is we're gonna actually see how much money we could save and we're gonna add it up. And so what we're gonna see what the urge is and then we're gonna like, nope, and we're saving that, we're pocketing it and it, we're gonna actually put it towards something that's far more important. So we create a game out of not spending money and doing the opposite of everybody else. And then of course, giving yourself part of your fun budget. A fun budget is so important, especially when you're paying off debt because it's a reward. You, If you are not rewarding yourself for the good new habits that you're creating, then you're gonna flop. You're, 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 not, you're not seeing the progress that you're making, so you're not gonna go the distance with it. And so, so what, we, what you did, you know, you, I don't know if you set it up as a purpose to begin with of like, okay, we're only gonna spend $14 and let's see how much fun we can have with $14. Because here's what happens, is you see lots of opportunities to spend $14. So what you have the opportunity to do, and it's super fun to teach your kids this, is for them to put the value on that dollar of what's most important. And then when you spend that on that thing, that thing now has higher value to you because you denied all the other things that didn't have the higher value. So it's creating a hierarchy of value for that dollar, which is fun to teach the kids. It's fun for them to learn it. And then they're getting to be able to process the understanding about value. So, okay, so is it the train ride or is it the hot dog, right? So guys, okay, think it through, right? Wh which one is most important to you? This is how much we have. Let's see how far we can stretch it. Let's see how much fun that we can actually have with it. Because without the hierarchy of value, we, we tend, let's put it this way. If people are actually to look inside their budget to see how much they're spending on what I call fun, what is that? That's eating out. It's doing what you did. You went to the you went to this uh, community event. Um, you know, uh, to the movies. Uh, 
uh, really even like uh, Starbucks, that would be part of a fun budget. Uh, I don't consider that a food necessity food budget. So it all depends on the person, you know, part of your fun budget. You might enjoy getting your nails done. That would come out of your fun budget. So you set aside a fun budget. And if you were to look at your expenses, and I'm not just talking to you, uh, Phelan, I'm talking to anyone who's listening right now. If you were to actually look at your fun budget, you'd be amazed. Some people are spending 500, 1,000 bucks a month on fun. Back when I was like super dumb, like retarded financially, and I was making too much money uh, for my retardation financially, guess what? Well, I was spending 25 grand a month on fun. What was that? Shopping, clothes, you know, five-star hotels, you know, luxury meals, buying cruises for friends, which was so stupid. Anyway, so so these and gifts for people. So that was all considered in a fun budget. And friend, I gotta tell you, like when I I took I took my fun budget to, from twenty-five thousand dollars a month down to a hundred. Look at that. Like what percentage is that? So I took it down to $100 a month, and I'm telling you, I had more fun with that $100 a month than I did with the 25. Why? Because I really didn't value what I was doing with $25,000 a month. Everything had the same level of value. It was just like, bah, just blowing money, just blowing money, just blowing money. So there was no charge. There was no emotional charge out of it. But when I limited myself down to $100 a month, Man, I'm telling you, I was very strategic with what I was going to do with that $100. I was really strategic. It was like eight pairs of shoes from Walmart, or I have to save for two months to find one pair of shoes from Nordstrom, right? And then eventually I lost the urge for shopping. Like it totally stopped my urge for shopping. And I actually started going, you know, I'm going to save this for a couple months. I'm going to save this for a couple months. And I ended up saving it for eight months. And I was able to get a plane ticket to Hawaii, um, as well as my accommodations in Hawaii, because I saved all that money. And so bottom line is, is that you can have fun with your finances. Make sure you have a fun budget. This is something I've been teaching for 18 years. I started doing it myself 18 years ago, and I found that I started to build my confidence, which is fun, okay? I started to build my confidence uh, on these small little, smaller goals that had higher value, and now I was in control versus totally out of control and unsatisfied. So I was much more satisfied with 100 bucks than I ever was with 25,000. So listen to me today, friend. If you are wanting to add more fun into your life, it is time to take whatever financial burden you have on you and flip that sucker over and find these new fun ways to enjoy life for free, okay? Spend some time outside. You know, um, there's there's so many different things that you can do. I don't know. Ask Rabbi Google, okay? I'm not the funnest person on the planet. I'll tell you that right now. But I love playing cards. Playing cards is free. Playing cards with your kids is free. Playing cards with your girlfriends or, or guy friends is free. These are things that don't cost anything, and you can have a blast doing it. Conversating while you're playing these cards. Play hide and seek with your kids. Free that is like super fun. Okay. There's all different kinds of things that you can be doing. Do not get suckered in by society that's telling you buy, buy, buy because it's fun, fun, fun. You're going to have fun if you spend money and you're going to all these expensive places. Come on, friend. Really look at it. Is it really working? And why don't you test it for a month? Let me have fun with no money and let's see what we can come up with. Come on. I think someone should write a book, How to Have Fun with No Money. I think, I think there's a book in there. Anyway, so if you want even more tips on how to have, yes, a better financial life and how to like have more satisfaction financially with what you're already making. And if you want to learn how to become totally financially free with your current income, even if you never increased your income, I have a gift for you. It's called First Steps to Wealth. It's free on our website right now. If you go to dannyjohnson.com, you can download your free copy of First Steps to Wealth. Just grab it right now. Download it. Start reading it. Page by page, you're going to learn how I went from homeless to making millions. You're also going to learn all the terrible mistakes that we made financially, including getting embezzled twice, including like getting almost a million dollars in debt and just like suffering from it, including some major marriage failures because we were not having fun, some major character flaws uh, that I had 
that you know there's still some other new ones in here I'm sure of it that I haven't uncovered yet that I still will be like working towards but anyway if you want to learn how to overcome all these terrible things and win and have a better life and more fulfilling and more fun to your life get a hold of your copy of First Steps to Wealth and start reading it today don't wait just start reading it today if you want a physical copy of it you can call our office you pay the shipping I'll pay for the $15 book fair no you know that's not fair but listen you can have fun with no money I promise you I want you to challenge society and you can also learn how to create wealth which is also a blast it's a blast the thing that used to beat you up now you're beating it up and now you're winning against society instead of being the loser of society and suckering into all of their pranks their games their ploys their manipulation friend this is your time this is your time to win this is your time to have fun financially thanks so much for joining us today please share today's show share it out right now just hit that share button if you're catching this on facebook or even on our webpage. just share it people need to hear this they need their lives to change we want to impact 100 million lives by 2035 and we can't do it without you so please hit share please text this message to somebody Please let's help the world succeed and have more fun. God bless you. Have a great one. Bye.